Tell me about this truth in a lie thing. I was trying to tell you about this myth. I think it's a Greek myth uh, about truth and lie. So forgive me if the story is wrong, but truth and lie, they, back in the days, they go to bathe themselves in the lake, right? So the lie goes in first and then starts swimming and then yells at the, the truth. Hey, come in, it's, it's beautiful, the water's wonderful. And the truth is like, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, and then the, the lie convinces the truth to come in the lake. And then the lie says, you have to get naked because you don't want to get wet. So truth undresses herself and goes for a dive. By the time the truth dives in the lake, the lie gets out of the lake, steals the clothes, dresses herself as truth and goes out to be presented in the world. Now, why do people don't, why is it that people don't want to face the truth? That's the myth, that's the painting, like we can show the painting. Why do people don't want to face the truth? Because in the world today, the truth is being presented as a, oh, the, the, the lie is being presented as the truth. And the truth is hard to look at because it's naked, it's raw, it's, it's not dressed properly. So there's this painting of this woman coming out of a, a, a bathtub or coming out of a lake that represents the truth naked, running away. So no one wants to look at the truth. That's the, that's the myth, you know. The truth is being presented as... Uh, uh, the lie is being presented as truth because it's dressed as truth. It stole her clothes and then the truth is hidden somewhere and it's hard to be faced. So that's the, that's the myth. That's a, yeah, dang. What's the, what's, the lesson? what's the lesson in that in like real world application? Dig deep because sometimes you're going to have to face reality and it's hard. It's, it's harsh. Uncomfortable? It's uncomfortable. It's, uh, it's, it's, it almost feels wrong to look at. Because, you know, if you look at a naked woman in the middle of the streets, I remember one day we were, we used to have church like in this public setting and it was by a river. So there was this lady with a, a mental illness. She was having a bathe in, in the river. And we, well, we walked into a set up church and she's naked. And everyone was like, oh, call the police or whatever. I was like, no, get a towel, guys. Get a towel and go and wrap her, wrap her in a towel. Because people are not prepared to look at something that is not usual, normal. You know? So. In our days, media, all of that, it's, it's a big lie being presented as the truth because it's well wrapped. That's the thing, like I, I think we should stop wrapping things up, just present things naked, just naked, raw. I like that. Wow. It's good, eh? That's good. The truth is hard to be faced. Dig deep, look beyond. It's what worth it. It's worth looking at the truth. Layers, man. I love the concept of layers. Yeah. You know, layers is, um, I always tell people, you have to have layers to what you say. I can tell you, look, this coffee is good. And then you go, oh, okay. Um, why? Because it's made with organic means. That's the second layer. Oh, really? Yeah. Where do they come from? Ethiopia. Did you know that in Ethiopia, they have the highest mountains? And because of the altitude, the, altitude, the beans, they grow different. Oh, really? That's the third layer. And did you know that they cultivate berries? around the coffee beans. So when the berries fall before the season to the ground, it gives them the flavor. Whoa. So that's why you can have, so that's the fourth layer of what I'm telling you. And then did you know that when they transported, before they come from Ethiopia to here because they don't have the resources, the Germans, they buy the coffee beans green and they roast it in German where it's cold so they can keep it. And then German is the highest distributor of coffee in the world, although they don't plant and sow any coffee. That's the fifth layer of what I just told you. And if I told you that you can drink this coffee in an echo village in Kurumban in Australia, Gold Coast, one of the paradi you know, paradisaic places in, in the earth, that's the sixth layer. It changes everything because now the coffee is not just coffee. It's coffee from pasture code that's feed propaganda. <laughs> coffee from pasture code that's organic from Ethiopia, transported from Germany to here, very well roasted in this beautiful environment. It's layers, layers. to what you're saying. If you got layers, it's deep and it's, it's unshakable. The truth needs to be unshakable. Ooh, should I link this to mm, our yeah. biblical principles? Yeah. All right, so we, when Jesus says, we are from a kingdom that cannot be shaken, it's because our kingdom has roots. It's the beginning and the end. It's not, it's not created by man. It's rooted in, like, it can't be shaken. It's, a, it's rock solid. And, and that's truth. That's why Jesus said, you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Mm. It can only be free if you're unshaken. If everything you believe is easily shakable, 
or shooken or whatever, however you say it. If everything you believe is just that easily shakeable, changeable, transformable, you never go anywhere, bro. You, you, you have no convictions. You'll be, you'll be like a double-minded man, tossed to and fro mm. by any wind of doctrine. What is doctrine? You know, people think that doctrine is a... Oh, man, we're going too deep. <laughs> <laughs> One more, come on. Why are we starting? What is doctrine? The truth. Okay, truth what is and doctrine? To the okay. Doctrine, the word doctrine means what you do. We are being indoctrinated, the, the lie that is dressed is true. We're being indoctrinated by social media and TV. They are telling you how to live and what you do. This is what you need to accomplish by 30, by 40. This is the standard. And this is, this is not news. It's no different than 100 years ago when the standard of beauty was defined by whoever because they belonged to this elite 2% of society and they dictate everything and they enslave the other 98% of people. That's, um, that's doctrine. That's why we say we don't, politicians, they indoctrinate people because they tell them what to do. That's the word doctrine. Now, Jesus told us what to do. Jesus gave us the real doctrine. And it's so simple. He said, look, if you're tired, come to me and I'll give you rest because my burden is easy, my yoke is light. When he uses the word yoke, literally in the Greek that was translated, but he was speaking in Aramaic, literally it means the interpretation of what you do. The interpretation of the law, the Torah, the oral tradition, the, the rabbis, they had such a heavy interpretation that if you walked two steps more than what you could on the Sabbath, you should be condemned and stoned. And Jesus says, I have a lighter interpretation of the law. Walk as much as you want. You, you don't have to keep that because Sabbath is for men, not men for Sabbath. So he reinterprets the thing and he tells you what to do. And he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So if you come and follow me, I'll give you one law, a summary of the whole thing. Love God and love you. That's it. And then he says it to the Pharisees who are supposed to be the specialists. He says, in it, it's the summary of all law, the Torah, the oral tradition, all the prophets, the, the books that they consider, and all history. Everything is contained in this thing. Now think carefully. The truth, now I'll give you the truth. The truth will set you free. If you wake up every day and go, I'm gonna love God and love people. Even if you don't believe God, like whatever energy you believe it's out there, you, you're just gonna respect that, honor that. I'm gonna love that and I'm gonna love people. Your life will be so meaningful, of so much service, that you'll be free. There's no depression. I'm not talking about clinical depression or anything, but the, you know, you won't feel sad. Um, your life will have a purpose. Like it's, it's just that, no wonder why people find purpose in religion, because it gives them. So yeah, truth and lie. Truth is hard to be looked at. You need layers, you need to be rooted. And if you learn how to look beyond the obvious. Ooh. I preached about this one day. The obvious, the not so obvious and the oblivious. We live in a society that we are, we kind of like this. The obvious out there, there's not so obvious and the, the oblivious. Most of the time, the truth is hidden in plain sight and we don't see it. So, yeah, so it's good. Man, that truth and a lie thing, that, good, that took my socks off, bro. And You've that, never seen that picture? No. Oh, no, I probably have seen the picture, but never heard it articulated like that. Because it was even like, even the process of truth taking her clothes off, jumping in the water, she's still truth. Yeah. She doesn't need to defend herself, even though she might be a little bit exposed and vulnerable. It's uncomfortable, yeah. but she hops out of the water, she's still truth. Yeah. I was like, dang. And why did she jump in the water? Because even truth believed the lie. Because the lie is convincing. The truth is convicting. You see the difference? Like a lot of people are convinced by a lie. Lawyers, are, like, forgive me lawyers, but lawyers are masters at telling lies yeah. to convince the jury. Because in the court of law, it doesn't matter what you do or what you did or what you didn't do. It matters the evidence. So if I can prove beyond the reason of a doubt that you have done this, and if I can convince the jury, it's not about being convicted. The 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 guy on on the on the seat that committed a crime, he's convicted. But the jury is convinced. If I can convince the jury on a on a trial, then this guy will be convicted. What's a convicted? Convicted is the sentence. So the the judge will give the sentence because the judge has the ability to convict. The mm. judge, mm. the judge, not the lawyer. The judge has the ability, the power, the authority to convict. The jury can only be convinced and offer the, the, the statement to the judge. 
So when you when it comes to your spiritual thing, um, what I said, okay, the lawyers, the lawyers, their masters are telling lies. They're convinced because a, a lie convinces. If, and they say it, if you lie to yourself uh, regularly and keep repeating it, you believe it. The truth doesn't have to convince anyone. The truth doesn't even need defending. Yeah. The truth doesn't have to defend itself. The truth doesn't have to lie to be truth. Jesus. It's naked. Bro, Jesus just laid down his life. Yeah. He didn't have to defend himself. Yeah. I, the think there's a quote, I think there's a quote by Charles Spurgeon. And if, if I got the author wrong, forgive me. But I think it's Charles Spurgeon. He said, the gospel is like a liar. It does not need to defend itself. Just set it free. If you set it free, you cause enough damage. Yeah. That's, that's the gangster. truth. That's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. I'll tell you that. That's the truth. Believe me. Truly, truly, I tell you. That's the truth. <laughs>